Hey everyone, how's it going? Elliot here from the Retro Future. This whole time I've been modding Game Boys with flash carts, rechargeable batteries, clicky shoulder buttons, backlit screens, different shells and buttons, and all of that time I've had a Game Boy Micro lying in a box that I've barely paid any attention to. Well, today I think it's time to give this thing the attention it deserves. So recently I was sent the EverDrive X5 by Crix, the guy who makes all of these absolutely wonderful flash carts. Now there's a bunch of different flash carts available and they're really, really decent things to have, especially if you've got a whole games library that you can't really carry around with you. You can just use the little sort of flash dump ROM doohickeys that are available and put your games on an SD card, then bring your whole games library with you wherever you go. Now, although this thing cannot play all of the rival handhelds that were available at the time, like Wonderswan, Neo Geo Pocket, Game Gear, Links, what it can still do is play Game Boy and Game Boy Color games, which sort of mitigates the issue with the Game Boy Micro that it doesn't play any uh, regular Game Boy and Game Boy Color games. So I know there's going to be a few people who are expecting me to say, you can't ever play Game Boy and Game Boy Color games on here. You can. For example, I have Link's Awakening for the original Game Boy, so I managed to get the ROM onto this little flash cart and I can bring that with me and still have access to my favorite original Game Boy games. Really quickly let's talk about the form factor of this thing. Now I have very big hands. As you can see the Game Boy Micro gets absolutely lost in my hands. Now you would imagine that that's going to make this thing very uncomfortable to play on. And technically speaking, that is true. Compared to things like a Game Boy Advance that you can mod for about $200, which I've done a video on, to get this thing around about the same spec as this, rechargeable battery, backlit screen. But that will give you a lot more comfort than something like this. However, the buttons on this are actually deceivingly comfortable. The D-pad is just the perfect size that you're not going to accidentally press multiple different directions. And the A and B buttons are so perfectly molded to fit my thumb just excellently. There's honestly no complaints there at all. The one slight downside I would say is that these shoulder buttons, although they are really big, it's slightly deceiving. You cannot press the end of the shoulder button it has to be in the center which means your hand sort of wants to form around here naturally but you have to sort of move those fingers slightly more to the middle in order to register the button press one thing i definitely have to give credit to is the use of the volume button for also changing the brightness of the screen you simply press the l shoulder button and the up and down and it will change the brightness of the screen speaking of which this screen is absolutely gorgeous. On the Game Boy Advance SP and the Game Boy Advance, the actual image is slightly stretched out. So it's not gonna have the same sort of pixel quality that this has. Because the screen is smaller, the pixels are more sort of dense and compact, which just gives a sharper looking image. It's not like the Game Boy Advance screen is disgusting, especially not with the modern IPS screens that you can buy. But it's just a point to take note of. If you're not into modding and you don't think it's something you can do or afford, the Game Boy Micro has a beautiful little screen. Obviously, it's got a rechargeable battery. Here's the specs on the screen of that. You can buy replacements fairly easily and it's just replaced with a Phillips head screw bit. So it's not very hard if your battery is dead, which is pretty common fault with the Game Boy Micro. You just buy another one on AliExpress, chuck it in, you're good to go. If you do not have a Game Boy Micro charging cable, you will need to buy one if it doesn't come with one when you buy the Game Boy Micro. Worst description ever. It's using its own proprietary connector, probably because this one has a much thinner form factor than the original Game Boy SP has, but it's just something to take note of. Also, that would have been pretty bloody expensive for Nintendo to have pulled off. They really pulled out all the stops for this one, especially considering it came out at the same time as the DS, which played your Game Boy Advance games, sort of makes you wonder why they even bothered. Another pretty cool thing that you can do with these Game Boy Micros is change the faceplates. I've actually got one with my face on it, given the faceplate definition a literal meaning. Which is quite nice because if you want to customize your Game Boy like I do on my channel, you can do it fairly cheaply. You can also get these really cool like clear ones and people like cut paper and put them behind so you can have any design you want. 
Overall playability, as I said, it is a little bit smaller, but by no means is it uncomfortable to play with, especially using like an EverDrive. It gives you just a tiny bit more sort of, of a chin to sort of grip onto however you choose to play your Game Boy. The EverDrive is really expensive, but it's an absolutely outstanding piece of kit. So definitely go check it out in the link below, not sponsored. The main sort of drawing thing to me for this is the fact that you just save your games as normal. There's no faffing about with save states and loading states. You just save the game as normal, and it saves it absolutely perfectly. There's just no issues with it at all. It's so well designed. I'm sure for a lot of people, all of this stuff has been a, something that you already know, but I've never really spoken about the Game Boy Micro on my channel. I did do one video about it quite a while ago, a little refurb on it. In that video, essentially, I took the whole thing apart and gave it a clean. It was kind of unnecessary. It was a really greasy Game Boy, so it did need a clean. But the only actual fault with it was just the battery. And as I said, you can pick up those replacement batteries really cheap. Another fault that I do find with a couple of Game Boy Micros I've had in the past is dead or leaking pixels. You can pick up the replacement screens for those very cheaply as well on Amazon or, or on eBay or AliExpress. I think you can get them for as low as six quid, which considering the price of an AGS 101 screen for the Game Boy Advance SP or an IPS mod, that's like 10% of the price. So it's a very good deal. It's a really nice console. Unfortunately, because it was made in lower quantities, they're relatively expensive to get your hands on, but you can often pick up pink ones for quite cheap. And pink ones aren't as bad as it might sound because if you don't like the color pink, you can get aftermarket shell replacements for them. So hopefully you've enjoyed this little video talking about the Game Boy Micro. Short and sweet, I know. I've just had an urge to talk about this thing because it's a really nice little device. Hopefully you've all enjoyed. If you did, leave a like. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. And I'll catch you in the next one. Goodbye.